Right now at six, they were promised housing at an affordable rate. I just need to choose to buy food or pay my rent. But just a year into living at this complex, residents say their rent is rising, putting them at risk. I'm forced to, to swallow that rent increase and have to just do without a little bit less. So they reached out to contact Denver 7 to get to the bottom of it. I really feel kind of betrayed, like I was misled whenever I first came in here. How does this make you feel? Uh, it makes me feel like I was lied to. Tonight, we have an in-depth look at how apartments can get away with this and what's being done at the state level to protect tenants. Denver 7's Jacqueline Allen kicks off our coverage. There's nothing like something home baked. A year ago, Melissa Diaz had no home to bake in. I've been homeless a couple times before. But everything changed for her when Vina Apartments opened, an affordable housing development in Denver's El Rio Swansea neighborhood and part of the low income housing tax credit program. It's my 15 minutes of fame. Melissa making headlines last year. I've been here since the beginning. One year later, though, she and other residents tell Contact Denver 7 that affordable housing is now not so affordable. Incorrect rent increase. Amount. Their documents show Vina first sent notification of rent increases around 5%, then a correction this month. In this group, increases ranging from 12% to 24%. Oh, it makes me feel like I was lied to. I don't think that it's really fair. You know, you get these large corporations and they say, oh, well, we're going to do affordable housing. And then they raise, you know, the rent that almost is pushing people out. Was this considered a win for Denver when it came to affordable housing? Um, I, certainly, I think it yeah, still is considered a, a win. Renee Gallegos is with the Denver Department of Housing Stability, one of the agencies that helps subsidize the construction of Vina Apartments. And there are limits to what Vina can charge for rent, but the new rents stay within those limits. We have seen increases in that area median income for the Denver area, which in turn trickles down. Turns out Vina residents are just the tip of the iceberg. In a statement to Contact Denver 7, the State Housing and Finance Authority says rent limits typically increase an average of 5% annually. 2022 was an unusual year, with HUD increasing maximum rent limits by 11% to 12%. And I understand that this is within what's allowed. Does it seem fair? I can certainly empathize with the people who are seeing this, who can't, who can't absorb even a $50 increase, and maybe now we'll be talking, or being asked to absorb a $100 increase because they're working on very tight margins. Every day is a hardship. Every month's a hardship. For Melissa, facing health issues and living on disability means a choice between paying rent and buying food. Am I going to get to bake this month? Um, because that's all out of my pocket. Really basic needs, you know, laundry soap. Just so you have to cut things out. Because affordable housing means something very different than it did a year ago. I really feel kind of betrayed, like I was misled whenever I first came in here. For Contact Denver 7, I'm Jacqueline Allen. And the city of Denver says it has many resources available for residents who are struggling to pay rent. This includes different kinds of rent and utility help. So we do have a link to the city's website with those resources right now on Denver7.com. And the median income in the Denver area has steadily increased over the past few years. In fact, we looked through city data today just to see how much it's gone up. Just four years ago, okay, four years ago, the median income in Denver is $65,000 up and up each year to where we are now, just north of $82,000 a year, an increase of nearly $20,000 in just four years. Of course, the rising cost of living, it's not just a metro issue. This really is an issue impacting all Coloradans. So let's dig deeper now. Lawmakers in our state capital are trying to add some protections for tenants as well. And Denver 7's Megan Lopez is joining us live from our newsroom. Megan, a rent control bill is advancing in the state legislature, but it definitely faces some hurdles and the rent control bill just passed the House yesterday and is now on its way to its Senate, but that's not before a pretty robust debate and a lot of opposition from Republicans in the House. The bill doesn't implement rent control statewide. Instead, it gets rid of a state ban on it and it allows cities and counties to make up their own minds about whether this is something that they want. A few exemptions were made for newer bills and for nonprofits with affordable housing in the House. Still, five Democrats joined House Republicans to vote no on it. Even the governor has expressed some concerns with the idea, and last year he even threatened to veto a bill that would have added rent control measures to some mobile home parks. The bill is now in the Senate, where the Democratic margins are a little more slim and where it will once again face a vigorous debate, but this time an uncertain fate. Today, Senate President Steve Fenberg said some of the changes the House made might make it a little more palatable. 
I think that probably lowers the temperature quite a bit. Um, a lot of the discussion has been around whether a policy like rent control would stifle development. And I think the the um, exemption for 15 years for new development, I think kind of counters that argument quite a bit. So I think it'll be a less contentious debate, but I'm sure it will still be a vigorous one. At the same time, though, Fenberg didn't indicate how he thinks his party will vote on it or how he thinks his caucus in the Senate at least will vote on it. The bill will likely come up in committee within the next two weeks. Which committee it's assigned to could very well reveal the Senate leadership's cards on whether they want it to pass, since some of those committees are just notorious for killing bills. And. All right, Megan Lopez, I know you'll be watching. Thank you. And we know there are likely many other people who are in the same position. So if you have something rent related that you would like our contact number 17 to look into, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can do so by calling the number on your screen or you can email us contact seven at Denver 7.